Hi you guys, welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker and welcome to show and tell number 172. I should have taken a sip of my water before I started filming, but I did just get done filming our first subscription box unboxing for the subscription box review of 2023. And I think many of you guys are really gonna like what's in the box. Some of you guys are probably gonna balk at the price, but it's gorgeous. Go check that out when it uploads on hopefully Saturday, because hopefully this will be going up on Thursday. It is what it is, guys. It, 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 it is what it is. So, full updates of what's going on. As I say in that video, I am in the process of switching out the lights in here to smart lights. I would show you guys what's going on, but I don't have a speaker in here yet and my phone can't take commands at the same time that I'm using it to make video calls apparently. So I will show you guys my lights doing fun things later on. Um, hopefully the speaker should be in here. The, the, the receiver speaker should be here over the weekend maybe. But I did find a cute little pink speaker, so I don't match my my television decor over there. I am still working on cleaning the craft room. I made progress and then started making cards and then we had company and but I do have my Easter cards on my desk. I am actively working on those. Content I filmed today may actually be split into two separate videos because there's lots of stuff to share. But I do actually have cards finished for Easter that will go out this year. And I have a lot of things where I'm like, why did I never finish this? Why did I never finish this? Why is this half done? What? This was very frustrating because these are from two years ago, I believe. And I had everything but the bunny ready for the outside of this card. All I had to do was stick it on a card, put some little gems in the bunny on it, put a little inside in it, and put some washi tape on the back. That's all I had to do. And I had 16 of those, 15 of those, ready to go. Same thing with these um, five by sevens. All I had to do was put some gems on these. That was another 10 cards, boom, done. And then I have three of these back here that all I had to do, they were already on the card base and had gems. All I had to do was do the inside and the washi tape was already on the back of the card. I don't know what, I, I don't know what happened last spring to where I didn't do any of this. I know we had, like Pippin had his oral surgery. Troy had his knee done. I know it was busy, but if these were already this far done from 2020, why did I not get these, or 2021? Why did I not get these done in 2022? And why am I just now finishing them in 2023? And why have they been taking up room in my floor this long? So that's actually why I started working on cards was this was all in a giant box sitting in my floor. I have three more bins over here. One is scraps. One is in progress Christmas scrap cards and one is the fall cards that I started also in 2021. At least I understand why I didn't finish them this year. This year I was gone. I couldn't do Thanksgiving cards while I was gone. So at least that makes sense. This, I was in Charlotte. Why did these, for two years, these have been sitting here 70% done. I probably have like... 60 or 70 cards that are 70% done. Why didn't I just finish these? I showed you what I'm going to show out of this. So anyway, I did get some cleaning done. Part of that has been kind of sorting through and sifting to figure out like maybe what I need to donate, what I need to sell. I did have my shelf and I will take a picture or try to remember to take a picture of what it looks like now. This was kind of filled top to bottom with paper pads and uh, my eight by seven card stocks. Um, the bottom two shelves collapsed. I think what happened is one collapsed and then the it caused the one below it to collapse. Uh, the shelf was bowing on the outside side. And a lot of that has to do with the 
fact, it just has that much weight. So we, we fixed the shelf problem and I was, I weeded through those and took some stuff out. I also had some other stuff that it was before I actively paper crafted and stuff that people had given me over the years that I took out. So now I have, um, two of the deep iris cases, not the jumbos, but just like the regular deep handled iris cases full of stuff to either donate or sell. And then I have another stack of 12 by 12 paper pads that I need to sell. Part of it is they're just not my style. Part of it is they're, they, they just don't, I'm just not going to use them. I have no use for these things. And I know I have more in there. I'm just tired of sorting right now. So that took up a lot of my time, actually, having to take everything off that shelf, then reinforcing it. My husband helped me with that. And then uh, we actually even found these really cool little caps that you screw in there. This like you screw down with the screw and cap to cover the screw. So I don't have ugly screws hanging out in my perfectly white shelf. Um, it's just a nice touch that I greatly appreciated. I was just going to paint them white, but I mean, if there's something that will actually do that for me and look nice, um, I did tidy up my cubes. It doesn't really look any different at all other than my AT, my extra four boxes of ATG are up there. If you guys remember in 2021, I bought the jumbo gross pack and I'm down to four boxes. So I use a lot of ATG tape. Um, I will probably use if two, if not three of those by the end of the year. So Maybe I'll remember to check this video out. I, I don't normally rewatch myself because I think I'm pretty awkward and weird. So I find myself off-putting. I'm glad you guys like it because I find myself off-putting. Um, I'm a little spazzy. I did go through some of my books to see kind of one of my goals was to work from my books because I have lots of beautiful books to work from. I got a lot of just random stuff picked up out of here. Uh, I do eventually want to replace my mini blinds, I think, with um, the shades that you can, like the one finger shades. But that's probably a tomorrow problem. Um, I'm still trying to get the corner cleaned out enough to where I can move my camera and filming stuff over there. And I need to get my table cleared off of just some of the random things I've collected here, like the bags all my stuff comes in I mean like that's all the organza and muslin bags my subscription boxes have come in for the last three years I'm tempted to like text out to one of the people I bought from and been like hey you want some of your bags back because I'm not using them they're just hanging out. I love the idea of them. It's great when I'm opening a package, but I never remember to reuse those for anything. So maybe I have to start sending out some like, just like happy mail stitch markers again or something. And I can at least use the small ones. Um, but like, I've got stuff like that. I did just, when we moved the movers for some reason took, I have folders in my Scrapbook papers, uh, if I don't use a whole sheet, I have scraps, and I put them in a white envelope inside the pad so I don't lose them. And for some reason, they took all those out of the pads. So I, I had to go through and, like, figure out which one of these went with what pad. So I finally got this emptied, which I think is really cute. It says I paid a buck for it. I don't know where I bought it from, but if you know where Spritz is sold, it's not the dollar store. Maybe it's, Oh, it says Target. Right there. <laughs> so I got that from Target apparently one Easter. Think, still think it's cute. I've had different things stored in it at different times, but I got that cleaned off. But like I just, I, I have random, I have like my coaster that I generally use for uh, non thermos cups. And yes, that's adipose. And I did mess it up. I actually messed it up with a hot cup that was uh, started out of the microwave. But I made him. He's an adipose from Doctor Who. I don't want to throw this away, but, you know, I've reviewed this and how much I hate this tool. Um, maybe I should keep it for the next time this becomes popular and people start talking about it again and want my opinion on it and don't watch the original review. But, Or maybe somebody will improve it. Maybe that's a reason to keep it. Somebody will improve it and I can compare it to the crappy one. But 
I just have all sorts of random things that have collected on this table and I want to move this to the corner so I can use it for filming because I'm really enjoying the standing filming thing for the last two years. But I'd like to be back over there in the corner instead of taking up the walk path <laughs> to my room. And I would also like to be over there because I'll be able to film more if I get this cleaned off. I can do tutorials down here so I don't have to wait for everybody to be out of my house and the house be quiet. I can come in here and shut the door. It's a whole, like I've spent 10 minutes telling you guys absolutely nothing. It's been bonkers here and I am all over the place. So, first up in my basket of goodies. This will probably be split into two because there is no way I'm going to get everything covered in here. I want to thank Amy, Alicia. I do love me a good farmhouse thing. These got, all got picked up right after I'd taken all my cards down. Unfortunately, these would have filled up all of my cards. But um, it's Kathy, I believe. Yes. Kathy. This is Tris. And do you know Tris's channel off the top of my head? I will leave her tagged. Hopefully, I'll remember to tag her. We know how good I've been at that recently. Um, this is Myra. I do love me a Florida. I, I'm not a beach person. I'm definitely a mountains person. But for some reason, I do love the Australian, Florida, subtropical Christmas cards. I, I There was actually, uh, he was called Kahuna Santa that somebody had made at a craft show. And he was a hand-carved Santa in board shorts with a surfboard. He made my day. This is from Anita. No, that didn't fall out. Okay. And that appears to be my mail call. I want to thank you all so much for these beautiful cards. I am still planning on eventually learning how to hand sew book bindings. And I want to sew all these together into a book and do by year. So these will definitely go in my collection. I save the envelope separately so I make sure that I can return you guys happy mail as I am sending out other cards and stuff too. So hopefully you guys will all be on the list. I remember to update the list again. Everybody will get an Easter card because... Easter or spring. There's some really cute spring things in there, too, that are just, you know, joyeux printemps. I don't know why it's in French, but it is. Um, all right. So I'm going to pause here and insert a video clip. Okay, you guys, so this is the Advent Shawl. I don't know how I'm going to introduce this in the video. It's all pinned out. It's on wires. I wanted to share with you guys just the sheer magnitude. Those cables will relax once I unpin it. I've got it very, very stretched right now. Between the... Because I did do tone on tone, some of the patterning is not quite as... Dramatic even here on camera. You can still see where my iron splotched some water. That's why I'm not going to unpin it quite yet as it is wet. But because I did this in DK weight instead of fingering weight, this is about six feet wide and about two and a half feet deep on the drop. So, I mean, it's, it's quite large. Hopefully by tomorrow I'll be able to unpin it. And before I edit this and upload it, I'll be able to uh, upload the video I'm putting this in. Be able to uh, show you more of it. But I did splotch quite a bit of water. I am going to spritz it as well just to kind of give just a little bit more uh, power to the block. Things I would do differently, I would block the three sections separately as worked, but I was trying to get this done for Christmas. I did not finish it until January 6th. It took me from the 23rd to January 6th to do the last two sections. And not because they were particularly hard, just because that was the time I had to do it in. So I had planned on originally blocking the original 
pattern, then blocking the secondary pattern, then blocking the outer border when I bought the shawl. And I wish I hadn't planned on doing it that way. It would have been better to block each section as the yarn was cut and the pieces were separated. So I would recommend if you do this shawl in the future, this is, I'm sure I introduced it, but What Tomorrow Brings by Telly Bean Knits. Follow the directions on blocking the three sections separately because it was a pain in the rear end to block and measure out each second section separately and allow that to block even with the because I'm I, this is an acrylic blend I could steam block it I didn't need to wet block it that's why I thought I could get away with it but regardless of the fiber you use for this block it as you go between the three sections okie doke so that is done. That is done, 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 done. Um, it's it's drying. I did go ahead and spray it down after I filmed that, so I am steam blocking it and wet blocking it. Um, hopefully, when I when I loosen it, the cables do relax to be a little bit longer. So ho hopefully, I didn't overblock the cables to make them look like noops or something, but. They're very pretty the way they are. I really like them. So I'm very excited that it's done. It took me so much longer than it really should have. Uh, in preparation of Vlogmas, I had actually gotten four days in advance at one point. So I don't know why it took me so much longer to do the last two days. The border does take a long time. It is a little bit boring and tedious because it's just knitting with some slip stitches at the end, which I have heavy use of stitch markers. And by the way, you guys, a couple of you guys asked me what the white strings were in the Instagram pictures. Those were lifelines. So if I made a mistake and had to frog back, I only had to frog back to the lifeline. So every day I put in a new lifeline. That's what that is. It's just dental floss. I've shared with you guys my, my bags like this that I keep around. I keep dental floss in there so I can do lifelines. Um, that's all they were. It was just lifelines. Uh, like I said in the video, I do really wish I had blocked them as I went in the three separate sections. It would have made certain things I was doing a lot easier because I was using an acrylic yarn. It did make it easier anyway. So follow the directions. Block it in three separate sections. As you finish each, each section, block it. It'll be just a lot easier and it will be a lot easier to block the final shawl out if you do it that way. It's a lot less time consuming. It seems like it would be more. It's not. Trust me, it's not. I will definitely redo that pattern though because I really, really like that pattern. Um, and I've already bought my next Telly Bean Knits pattern. So like I said, my 2023 goal, she's very quickly becoming a just yes designer where I'll just accept whatever she sends. I know actually three of her patterns because... If you subscribe to her, you got an email telling you that for 60% off, there was another pattern she designed to kind of be like the kid's sister of the What Tomorrow Brings shawl. And it was to use the leftovers that you were going to have left over if you had used, say, mini skeins from Advent to make yours. Uh, the original is called for using a mini pack. I may or may not have minis that I could remake it with that I'm probably not going to use, but I could. But the cowl uses the scraps that would be left over because it is 25 days. There are lots of little pieces in that that didn't take up much yarn. So you had scrap yarn and she actually made a pattern so you can use those scraps up. And it's beautiful. Once again, it is not nearly as technically heavy as the full sampler shawl was. But it's absolutely beautiful. And I believe it may be on sale still. So if you um, check out her Ravelry, definitely worth it. I will have the What Tomorrow Brings shawl in the description box down below. But it's done. Hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to unboard it. And if there's an opportunity, I may have already put a video clip of me showing you how nice it looks or how nice it doesn't look. I don't know. I don't know what tomorrow brings. <laughs> no pun intended. I don't know what tomorrow brings. Uh, every day is different. So uh, I'm going to go ahead since we're already, 
I think that was like a three minute clip. So we're already like 15, 20 minutes into this. I want to share with you guys what I got for Christmas that was craft related. And then next week we'll talk about the other acquisitions and whips in my basket here. Because I did buy something that I'm very excited about. And I'm sure many of you guys will be really, really excited to know uh, what I purchased and where I purchased them from. Uh, let's see. That's... I forgot to take the yarn out from last time and put it up. So I do have to kind of like think about that. So first off, Christmas Day, my husband gifted me with this. So this is actually two skeins from Yarn Snob. And this is to make the 1000 color cowl. cowl. And I will be making that. I am looking forward to casting that on probably after I cast on my subscription. But you have to wait till Saturday to find out about that. Well, not the project, but what I'm going to do with it. And you'll understand. But this does come in a couple different colors. Uh, this one is the same. This is your color option. You can do it in gray, white, pink, black. It would be gorgeous in any and all of them. I did uh, ask for this through webs.com, which or yarn.com, webs. I have ordered from them guys here before. You know all about it. I'm sure uh, they are officially going to be part of Lovecrafts with no more affiliation to the original ownership at the end of this month, I believe. So that is a little sad, but I do think this was a really good acquisition and merger. It makes good sense for us and for Lovecrafts because we will be able to probably get a slightly better deal on some of the things we love from Lovecrafts that, you know, we're having to pay international shipping on. And we will have a little, and I have seen some of that on the website where we're getting a little bit more of the UK European yarns and also for Lovecraft customers in the UK and Europe, a little bit more of some of the indie dyed things that are in the US that you cannot get outside of the US or continental North America section up here. Because I know a lot of Canadians are able to get a lot of stuff we are. They just have to pay more for it. But a lot of stuff that Canadians can get, you cannot get shipped to the UK. So, or you're paying like six times what Canadians are paying. Anyway, I think it's a smart merger. I said that in the very beginning when the family sold the company, but we officially got an email saying that they were no longer going to be in their existent roles. So it will officially be all Lovecrafts at the end of the month, I believe, or it happened at the end of December. Or so anyway, love it, love it, love it. I gave my husband three things to tell my stepsons. This was one that they did not purchase, so he purchased it for me. So if you know where we're going with what my stepsons got me. <laughs> um, he Troy also got me this. This is something that I saw when I was doing the Charlotte area yarn crawl. Each one of these contains stitch markers in this shape. And it's how many of them? It's a total of 120 nylon coated steel markers and five styles for each of six colors. They're absolutely fantastic stitch markers. I was drooling over this when I saw it in the shop. There are a couple places online that sell this as well. So if you are a marker junkie, A, they're beautiful colors. It's a Cocoa Nets product, so you know it's a quality product anyway. It is a little pricey. But in particularly, if you are a knitter who does a lot of lace projects, doing that advent shawl, at one point in time, I think I had two, no, four nice markers that were big ring markers that had charms on them so I could mark beginning, end, middle, something else. And then I had a bunch of bulb markers in between. Um, I think I had at most 20 markers in that shawl at one time. So if you are a a stitch marker junkie and you're into lace cables if you need markers to help you with visual recognition of where you are in your project or what stitches are coming up to be aware of I highly recommend getting something like this even if it's not the coconuts flight of stitch markers I highly recommend having options and I do love the fact so these are great for socks I like the triangles for marking irregularities. So if I need to know, like this is the center of something and it's a smaller project that could use either one of the two smallers, 
the triangle will work and it gives you a great visual recognition something is different. If you were marking like in your crochet or you want to mark like an edge, you just want to mark the edge stitch but don't want to have to slide a marker back and forth, you know, this is your starting edge. I love the open ring split markers and then this is just a larger circle marker, round marker. Um, if I was doing something tiny, I definitely would not want to use these, but these are a very, very gracious size. So I think you can fit up to like a 13, US 13 needle very easily. And I have, you know, once again, a goal is to use bulky weight projects. So this will come in very handy. This is actually about to go live beside the sofa. These will be my good stitch markers. Um, I have not been as excited about a set of stitch markers as I am about this, and I will probably order some more of their split ring markers because I really, really like their split ring markers. But that is the Coco Knits flight of stitch markers. And here is the information about the sizes. I highly recommend... Well, the jumbo says up to a US 1916, so that's an even larger needle than I thought it would. Um, I guess 11 is about pencil size, a little bit larger than a pencil. So, I mean, that's a very, very gracious size, and it's very hard to find large stitch markers that move nicely. Um, some of the cheaper ones tend to stick on your needle, and you don't want that. Like, I, I've told you guys, I'm, I'm not a yarn snob, but I am a needle snob. I don't want anything to get hung up. I like things to glide from the cable onto the needle and from the needle off to the next one. I don't like to fight my work and good stitch markers also fall in that. I, I believe investing in your tools and investing where you need quality is important. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to harp on about it. That's all I'm going to say about that, but I really do love this. And I told him about this in August and he still remembered to get it for Christmas. So Kudos on my husband for that one. So my stepson's, oh, and this came with the 100 colors shawl kit. Um, my stepson's got me this. So one, I did get a game from the third one, but crafty only. This is the Wonderland Yarns Cheshire Cat. These are the fingering weight. They're macro minis. Do they call them something weird? They're one skein or one ounce skeins. Five skeins, 640 yards. So that's one, two, three, four, five ounces. So that's like three and a half ounces is 100 grams. Can y'all math from there? So it's like 150 grams ish. Um, <clears throat> you guys know I am a sucker for any of the Wonderland collections. This gradient is particularly beautiful because it does the solid, picks up a speckle, moves on to the next solid with speckling. You can see the denim blue peeking through some of the purple there. The next color is denim with a very faint hint of the purple, and then we move into the aqua. I love the way they do their gradients. They are exquisite color palettes, beautiful yarns, like I said, I have a theme. This is the carry theme in one package. Um, I Yeah, I'm very, very grateful to have this. I will put it with my other mini skein sets that I do have plans for many of these. And I'm very excited. Um, next, we have this absolutely gorgeous cake of yarn. If you are not familiar with this label, this is a Noro. So this is Yukata, and this is 50% silk, 25% wool, 25% polymed, 200 grams. This is also a fingering weight. Uh, oh, no, this is at number two. So this is um, Sport. I, I would say it's heavy fingering to Sport. Uh, this is the color number eight. Yukata is a kimono often worn to summer festivals. So, obviously I'm thinking shawl. I mean, 
I mean, clearly that needs to be more near my face. And when they make a beautiful Valentine's project. Just saying, you know, just saying. Uh, so, I don't think there's anything, nothing else in here is Christmas related. That's how far behind I am on filming these updates, just for the record. There's been lots of content, aside from that one week I had to take off because I was just too busy trying to do everything. But I think, because I shared my um, hypnotic purchase because everybody's in love with butternut. I told you guys in the beginning, this is just special. So I'm going to unpack my basket of my Aberdeen wool and yarnable purchases. And that way I won't be confused, but we, we will have FOs and acquisitions next week. Um, so, like I said, I'm really hoping this goes up Thursday. I'm filming on Wednesday. I'm hoping I can get this edited tomorrow morning and, and uploaded and stuff tomorrow. Um, when I get this uploaded Saturday, we will have the unboxing of our first subscription box of the year. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. I'm very, very excited, especially now that I have it in my hot little hands. For two days now, I've been dying to cake it up and start working with it. So I'm very excited. Hopefully, all going as intended. On Tuesday, we will have a tutorial for the corner to corner squares that I used in making my blankets that the join I did in November has to do with. Um, it will all depend on timing. If I can get quiet or the craft room done. Otherwise that will be next Saturday. It will come up next week. It just either will be Tuesday or Saturday. I don't know which yet. And then hopefully I will slow down on the content again and we'll be back to a Thursday, Saturday schedule. <laughs> There's just been so much to share with you guys, and there, there's. I'm very excited about my goals this year. Uh, I already have something that is an old whip from last year almost done. Uh, I have a couple of things set aside that I'm ready to work with, so I'm very excited. I already have ball bands in my notebook to, to, that are done. I finished yarns. Uh, so I'm very excited to share with you guys as the year continues. I'm, I'm very excited about the start of 2023. I'm hoping we can get a lot of fun stuff done and I can share a lot of fun stuff with you guys. I'm very excited to be back to the subscription box review series. <laughs> All right. See if I can find my clicker without, you know, dumping everything off my desk again. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, fantastic day. I'm sorry for spending 15 minutes of your life just yakking at you and not really sharing anything fun that they may actually have come here for. Thank you guys once again for the Christmas cards. They really do mean a lot to me and I can't wait to display them and share them again in the books. It's just going to take me some time. It's going to take me some time. Please take care and I will see you guys real soon. Bye guys.